Okay, we are coming back to the issue I had with my Peugeot 508, but this time we are fixing it in a modern and cost-effective way, 3D printing. After the first attempt didn't work out due to the material being too stiff, I've got the final product here. This is the part that broke in the throttle body, and you can't get it separately. I've added a link to the 3D model I created in the video description for anyone who might need it. This is a 2 liter diesel engine from Peugeot Citroën and it's also found in Ford, DS and even Volvo models. Let's begin by removing the throttle body from the engine. It's just a few Allen bolts, two connectors and the air intake hose. In the meantime, let me tell you a bit of background. This small plastic lever is connected to the throttle butterfly and is controlled by vacuum through the small diaphragm inside a vacuum chamber. Over time, due to friction between the plastic parts, the hole in the lever widens and breaks, causing play. In my last video, I used zip ties to eliminate the play, but you know me, and I even got some criticism in the comments for it. I'm not a fan of improvised solutions. I searched online for a 3D model of the broken parts, but found nothing. So I decided to create one myself, and here it is, side by side with the original. I'm now continuing to remove the zip ties I used previously. In the first step I want to check if it even fit. Good. To remove the lever from the vacuum chamber, I will gently open it using a small flat screwdriver. You will need to carefully release each of the clips that hold the two parts of the chamber together until it comes apart. Now that the chamber is open, we can see that the lever is connected by a spring and a sealing rubber, the diaphragm. When there is a vacuum in the chamber, the lever is pressed downwards, pulling the throttle butterfly into the closed position. When the vacuum drops, the spring pushes the lever back up. Now, let's look at the two levers side by side, new versus old. Perfect, let's install the new lever. The rubber need to sit on this smaller diameter. Okay. Fix. After the lever is in place, we will close the two parts of the chamber together until we hear a click. I will double check to make sure there is a proper vacuum and no pressure leaks. Great! Good. Now let's put it back.
While I reassembled the throttle in reverse order, let me tell you that just yesterday I received another comment on the previous video. And it turns out the vacuum chamber along with the lever is sold separately. But the price is still a bit high, around 50 to 60 dollars, and I couldn't find it in stock. For those of you who are interested, the part number is displayed on the screen. In any case, the link for the 3D model I created is in the video description for anyone who needs it. The cost of the model is minimal, just 4 euros, which should cover the time and effort it took to create it. At first, I made the lever from a heavy duty industrial material called Onyx. It's heat resistant but too stiff, so when I connected the arm, it broke. For my next attempt, I used PETG. And I also made a few adjustments to the model itself. I increased the auto diameter by a millimeter at the point where the plastic had broken. And I added an additional 0.1 millimeter to the center hole. The PETG should handle the temperature in the area of the engine bay. And in any case, I attached another 3D lever with a zip tie nearby to check for any deformation. It's been a month since I filmed this video and the check engine light hasn't come on once. The 3D lever itself has held up well without deform from the heat or pressure it's exposed to. Good luck everybody!